Hello, my name is Edward Thompson. I'm a program manager for Microsoft Visual Studio Team Services, and I'd like to introduce you to the awesome Git support that's available in VSTS. The first thing you'll need to do to get started with Visual Studio Team Services is set up your account. This is both super easy and it's free. VSTS is free for up to five users, and that free support will host unlimited Git repositories privately and securely. All you have to do to get started is go to visualstudio.com slash team dash services. Once you're there, you just need to click the get started button to create your new account. First things first, you'll need to log in with your Microsoft account. Then you're able to create your Visual Studio Team Services account. You just need to give it a name and click continue. I'm going to bring over a little .NET desktop project that I've been working on. Right now, it's in a Git repository that I have locally, but I wanna host it in VSTS. My project takes a file and displays the contents in hexadecimal. The project is called Hexdump. So I'll name my VSTS account Hexdump Demo. If you want, you can customize some things as you're getting started. For example, you can change how your first code project is set up. You can choose to use either Git for version control or Team Foundation version control, which is a centralized version control system. I'm going to use Git to get started, but you're not tied to this. You can have a mix of Git repositories and centralized version control if you want. You can also expand some other defaults by clicking this Change Details button. You can change the way your first code project is created. By default, it's just given a simple placeholder name. You can accept the defaults and change this later, or choose a name for your project now. Again, my project already has a name, so I'm going to enter it here. Aside from customizing the name, you can choose the type of project management you want to use. I like Agile project management with issue boards and burndown charts, so I'm going to keep the default. But you might like the Scrum style or maybe even something more classical and regulated, like a structured CMMI project management system. But the most interesting change you can make when you're getting set up is where you want your account to be created. Visual Studio Team Services lives in Microsoft Azure, so you get an option on where you want to host your code in one of our geographical regions. This may be important for compliance. You may need to keep your data in a particular geographical region, but even if you don't, this lets you keep your code close to you so that your network access is fast. When you click continue, your account will be created in the geographical region that you chose. Once the account creation process finishes, you'll be taken to a getting started page for your project. Here, you can get started by importing a repository that you have hosted somewhere else, or you can start by adding some simple files, and you're given the URL to clone this empty Git repository that you can then add code to. But like I said, I already have a repository locally that I've been working on. So I'm going to select this option to push an existing repository from the command line. This section will expand, and it will give me some instructions to paste into the command line that I can then run from inside my Git repository to push it to VSTS. Of course, I don't actually want to type these by hand, so I can select this little option over here to copy them to the clipboard. Then I can switch over to my command prompt and paste them right in. This sets up VSTS as my upstream repository, and then it pushes all my branches up to VSTS. When I hit enter to do the push, I'll get a pop-up asking me for my VSTS credentials. We've actually extended Git for Windows to enable the custom authentication for hosting providers like GitHub, Bitbucket, and of course, VSTS. So the great thing about this is that it actually supports and understands two-factor authentication for those services, 
So you can authenticate normally without having to configure and use something like a personal access token. Now, once you're authenticated, your repository is uploaded to VSTS. And when that finishes, you can navigate back to the VSTS webpage. This is the dashboard for your new project. Once you've pushed up some code, VSTS will encourage you to set up a build and release pipeline for your project but it will also show some information about your Git repository. If you have a readme, it will be down at the bottom. And over on the right, it will show you some statistics about your commits and pull requests. Of course, if you want to dive in deeper, you can click on the Code tab at the top. This will open up the Repository browser, where you can navigate through your repository. There, you can browse through files, you can open up folders, and if you click on one of the files, it will actually open up the file viewer. This is really cool because it's actually the Monaco editor, the same text editor that powers Visual Studio Code. So you get things like syntax highlighting and code analysis. If you want to do more than just look at the file, maybe you want to look at the version control information about the file. There are some more tabs on top. For example, you can click on the History tab and see how your file has changed over time. It will actually show the git commits that affected your file. In this case, I haven't changed it much, so I only see the commit that I first added the file and then the next commit that changed it. If you click on the Compare tab, it will show you the most recent change, and again, this diff view is opened in the Monaco editor, so you get a nice side-by-side -side diff experience. If you prefer an inline diff, more like what you see in the git command line, instead of side-by-side, -side, you can toggle that view instead. And of course, you can click the Blame tab to dig down into what changes were made to this file on a line-by-line -line basis. This will show you the most recent commits that changed each line, so you can see how each line came into being. And of course, you can dig in deeper onto each of those changes. If you click on the commit itself, it will show you how the file existed at that particular version. So you're able to get a lot of information about the files in your repository and how they've changed. But it's not just about individual files. You can also get information about the repository, how the entire repository has changed over time. For that, you can click the Commits tab. This will show the commit history to the entire repository over time. Something that's nice about the commit history view in Visual Studio Team Services is that you get to see the history graph. That's displayed over on the left-hand side of the history display, and it shows you how branches have actually been merged into this repository. This is a big advantage over most Git hosting providers who just show a flat list of commits. In this repository, the commit graph shows me that for each of these little changes I've made, I've created a new branch, and then I've merged them in. This is the sort of graph that you'll see when you use a pull request based workflow, which we'll talk more about in a minute. But first, I want to point out that I've examined a lot of content in my Git repository. But of course, Visual Studio Team Services isn't just read only when it comes to your Git repository. You can actually make changes in your repository right from within the web browser. If I click the Files tab to go back to the repository browser, and then I click on one of my files, like this one, my readme. Then again, this will open the file to view in the Monaco editor. But of course, the power of the Monaco editor isn't just in viewing files, it's also in editing files. 
And that power exists in VSTS as well. If you click the edit button in the top right, now you get the full editing power. I'll type in a little change to this paragraph of my markdown file. And since this is Markdown, you see the Preview tab at the top of the code editor. When you click that, it will open up a rendered version of the Markdown. So it's not just text editing, you're also able to get a preview of what you're doing. So even though we're working on VSTS, the website, we're actually able to make useful contributions to our project. You can also see exactly what you're changing on the Highlight Changes tab. This will show you exactly the changes that you've made in Monaco's Diff Viewer. When you're happy with your changes, you can check them right into your Git repository. You can just click Commit at the top right of the editor. When you do that, you'll be prompted for a commit message. You can also change which branch you're committing to. So if you want to commit to a private branch and then create a pull request, you can do that. You can even link your change to a work item for traceability if you want. When you click Commit, that data will be stored in the repository. And then you can click the Commits tab again. And you'll see that this change that I made was recorded in history. So, it's great that you can edit files and even commit changes on VSTS, on the website itself. But as software engineers, that's very rarely how we actually work. Generally, we pull down our repositories to our local machine and work on them there. And of course, VSTS supports that workflow too. In fact, VSTS supports a variety of development workflows. Here, I've moved over to my Mac, just to show you there's nothing about VSTS that ties you to Windows. Sometimes people expect that a Microsoft product will only work with other Microsoft products, but VSTS supports any language on any platform. Now, if I want to clone my repository to my Mac and work on it there, then I can click the Clone button in the repository browser to get the clone URL. And this time, I'll actually use SSH to connect to VSTS because I've set up my SSH public key with my account. So I can just clone with the SSH URL that VSTS gave me. Once my repository is cloned, I can work on it with my code editor of choice. I grew up on VI, so I could use that, but this is a .NET project, so maybe I'd wanna use Visual Studio for Mac or even Visual Studio Code. Once VS Code opens my repository, I can open up one of the files. This is my README file that I edited earlier, and oops, in my haste to edit it, I didn't even finish that sentence. So I'll need to correct that. And as far as good development practices go, I want to use a pull request based workflow. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new branch. Once that's done, I can save this change. Then in the Git source control view, I can commit my change. Once that's done, I can go back to the command line and run git log to see that my change is indeed committed to the repository. And once my change is committed, I can just run git push to push my changes up to Visual Studio Team Services.
Once my changes are uploaded, I can open my VSTS project in my browser. If I reload my project, it will actually tell me that I've just pushed a branch and encourage me to create a pull request with my changes. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask for my branch to be merged into the master branch. And this is where some of the collaborative power of VSTS really shines. Pull requests offer an amazing code review experience. This is a small project that I work on by myself, but if I had other collaborators, this is where they could perform code reviews. You can also set up branch policies as part of your pull requests. Branch policies control how code is allowed to flow into your integration branch. For example, you can ensure that continuous integration builds have to succeed and your tests have to pass before you can merge your pull request. I haven't actually set those up yet. So for now, I'll just click Approve on my pull request and then click Complete. Completing the pull request will merge my pull request into my master branch. So if I click back to my commits view, you can see that my fixed typo commit that I made in VS Code and then the merge commit are now in my repository. So VSTS gives me great functionality to work on my Git repository. I can make changes in my text editor or my IDE and push them up with the command line or with my favorite Git GUI tool. It's been really easy for me to evaluate VSTS for just my needs with my simple repository. But I'm not limited to just one repository. Again, with my free VSTS account, I get unlimited private Git repositories. If I come back to my PC, I can see in VSTS at the top left of my window, the little Git icon and the name of my repository. If I click on that, I can manage my Git repositories. There, I can create a new repository, or I can import a Git repository from another hosting provider, or even convert a centralized version control repository to Git. If I click New Repository, all I have to do is give my repository a name. I can also add a README to my repository and I can even add a git ignore file customized for the project that will live in my repository. If I want to add a Java project, then I can just select that git ignore file. So now when I click create, I have a new repository created for my new Java project. I can clone this down like before, and start adding my code to it. Because again, VSTS supports any language on any platform. So this has just been a quick introduction to the Git functionality within Visual Studio Team Services. When you're ready to get started with some more advanced Git topics in VSTS, you can learn more at visualstudio.com slash team dash services. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Edward Thompson, and I hope you enjoy your experience with Git in VSTS.